Thanks for joining us for another Oilfield Basics video blog. My name is Derek Craig and I'm joined here with Sebastian Jaya. And we here at Oilfield Basics are trying to build the go-to educational platform for the oil and gas industry. And there's many awesome topics like we're about to cover today. And if you like what we're doing and find this video helpful, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share it with somebody who you think would benefit from it. It's really going to help us out. But today we're going to be talking about economic production. So what that actually is, what it even means, why we care, and we're going to talk you through a little bit about economics and some of the reasoning behind all of this. So a little bit of economic jar jargon coming up, so stay tuned, we're about to dive in. Okay, so let's start off with the realization that we can, to some extent, control a flow rate from a well. We know that a difference in pressure will create a flow. We see this from millions and millions of examples from our, in our day-to-day -day lives, that pressure would flow from high to low pressure. We know that the greater the pressure difference, the higher the flow rate will be. Mm -hmm. Now let's transfer this knowledge over to the oil field wells drilled into one or more pressurized reservoirs. The hydrocarbons will flow from the reservoir rock into the well and then up to the surface where the uh, processing equipment will be. Any gas will be sent into a pipeline or flared. The oil and water will be stored on site in large tanks or set into the pipeline as well. Now the point of all this is that we can to some extent control the amount of production from a well by trying to create or maintain the target pressure difference between the reservoir and the surface equipment. The larger the difference, the greater the amount of production. And so as you can see from this well, uh, the reservoir pressure is, let's just say, is around 3,500 uh, PSI. And on surface, at the wellhead, our pressure is 500 PSI. And so our delta P is, our difference in pressure is 3,000 PSI. When the well is relatively new, operators typically keep the well choked back. This is done with the mechanical restriction in the flow line at the surface, which creates a higher surface pressure, which will thus hold the well back more from producing at its highest possible rate. This is commonly done for many reasons, and they mostly come all back to economics. So as you can see, on surface, by introducing a mechanical restriction, um, you could uh, increase the pressure to, let's just say, 1,000 psi. And then the difference in pressure, your delta P, will be 2,500 psi. And so because there is a less of a difference in pressure, this will decrease the amount of production that you will see. So again, bringing this all back to economics, we first need to realize that flowing the well wide open could damage the lifetime productivity of that well. So imagine hydrocarbons flowing through the reservoir at such a high rate that it actually damages it. And that's a whole other video in and of itself. But for now, we'll leave it at that. And flowing wide open might also require a large and expensive infrastructure on surface and also production, so such as production equipment and pipeline capacities and storage capacities on location. And so to fully understand this, let's check out a standard decline curve of a well. So this decline curve shows us that as we produce the well, the reservoir pressure decreases from where we're producing from and all other factors held the same. This decrease in pressure is going to lead to less production. And so this curve being graphed is oil and gas production on the left versus time on the x-axis. And you can see how quickly they taper off. And so as a production engineer, we have to engineer the size of the production equipment for the well. So if we try to size it for this peak rate that we're gonna have at the initial life of the well, then we're gonna spend a lot of money and we're gonna end up with oversized equipment. And this equipment is only gonna end up running at, a, at its full capacity for a very short period of its lifetime. So here's option number two. What we can do is we can have a managed drawdown, and that's a whole other video all by itself as well, managed pressure drawdown. Um, but anyways, so what this allows us to do, we're gonna choke the well back initially in the forefront of the production. So our production rate's gonna be a little bit lower, but it's also gonna hold out a little bit longer. And also, so we're gonna have a less steep of a decline, and we don't need to size our equipment as much. So again, all of this just comes back to economics. This one perhaps is a more sustainable rate. And which method you think will be the most economical? This is going to depend on the company's preference. So are they actually looking for the fastest return on their investment? They might take the first case. If they're looking for the highest overall value of their investment, then perhaps they'll be looking at the case here on the right. And again, this is going to differ company by company. And either way, we want to make sure that the income that we're getting from selling the oil and the gas is going to be much greater than the expenses that we have to produce the well. But all right, so these are expenses such as labor, trucking, water disposal, overhead costs, 
maintenance fees, all of these things, we need to make sure that we have a large profit margin because we have to pay off all of the expenses that we incurred from drilling and completing or fracking that well. Now, if you're talking about an older well, there are many ways that production engineers can help create this higher difference in pressure or delta P as we call it. And you can't easily change your reservoir pressure. So for most of our options, they're going to be surface options or things that we can change at the surface. And one of these common ways is going to be through wellhead compression. So this is going to be a common way that we can reduce wellhead pressure to increase that delta P. And so we can install a compressor to help reduce this back pressure on the well, but keep in mind that compressors are usually pretty expensive. And so all of this is going to come back to that the expense in trying to create that uplift must be justified by the amount of production uplift that we got. So we need to make sure that overall we're net positive in terms of our gains. So in conclusion, how hard we choose to produce the well is typically going to depend on that company and that and the economics of this well. So what are our costs to produce it and at each of the rates and what is going to drive the most value for the company overall? You might also find that companies will behave or alter their behavior based off of the commodity pricing at the, at the current time. So for example, if your commodity pricing is pretty high, companies might choose to take the more aggressive approach and they might take on that risk of producing their wells harder Whereas if commodity prices are low, they will probably be more conservative in their approach to the drawdown and to uh, their relationship with the pressure and increasing their delta P to get the most production that they can for the most economical amount. Well, that was a pretty big topic to cover in just a few minutes, and indeed we just skimmed the surface. So be sure to comment, like, subscribe to our channels for future videos, and check out our online courses at oilfieldbasics.com learn. If you'd like to learn more about the entire life cycle of a well, the design of a well, production equipment, and so much more. So we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.